On this journey, I'd be heading to Arctic Sweden to tackle one of the toughest hikes I'd ever attempted. A 10 day, 130 kilometer solo crossing of Sarek National Park. This region, known as Europe's Alaska, is situated in the secluded heart of Sweden's Arctic North. Part of the Laponia UNESCO World Heritage Area, it represents the largest expanse of pristine wilderness anywhere in Europe. Characterized by its rugged beauty, the landscape is a tapestry of broad valleys and imposing peaks. This journey would be at times majestic, yet frequently test the very limits of my endurance. Reaching the starting point was an adventure in its own right, demanding a 30-hour journey that commenced with a flight to Stockholm, followed by an overnight sleeper train to the far north of the country. This led me to the important railway junction at Bowden, where I connected with yet another train service. Next stop, Muriek, you will find the bathroom on the left-hand side. From Muriek, a six-hour bus ride took me to the small remote settlement of Kvikjok, 150 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, where I'd start my hike. The initial section of my walk would be on the famous Kungsleden long distance trail before breaking off and taking a winding route north through the spectacular mountains of Sarik National Park. My hike would end on the shores of Lake Acker to the north. end of day one um, I've walked about seven kilometers I stopped at Kvikjok um, about half five six o'clock something like that and it's taken me about two and a bit hours to walk those seven kilometers and I've got dinner on the go so tonight's menu is pulled pork with rice it's actually quite nice I'm pretty happy overall I've set myself up to do some decent distance tomorrow so I'm gonna go to bed quite soon get a good night's sleep The previous day I'd covered a brief stretch along the Kungsleden, setting up camp in a tranquil glade within the birch forest. The next leg of my journey entailed a northern course, initially weaving through the birch forest and then traversing a lake jeweled plateau. From there I'd pass by the Sami huts at Parek, making my way onto the expansive hillside before reaching my planned camp nestled in the southern quarries of the Parate mountain. I bade farewell to the Kungsleden, turning onto the trail that winds its way toward Parek and the Sarek Mountains. Up on 
the lake-filled plateau, I encountered my first herd of semi-wild reindeer, inhabitants of the park tended to by the local Sami people. At this point I faced my first significant river crossing. Sarek, lacking infrastructure, offered no bridges until the very end of my journey. Consequently, each river crossing required the same ritual, changing into my fording shoes on one bank and back into my hiking boots on the other. This routine would become a familiar rhythm as my expedition unfolded. Okay, so that's the end of day two. On the menu tonight we have chili con carne, which is quite nice. Today was was a difficult day, it was pretty tough. Uh, I covered about 20 kilometers in total, so I knew I needed to make the best of the weather. Well, it lasted, but there's rain forecast now, tomorrow and the day after. My plan for day three was to cross the rim of the quarry before descending into the Njotsosvaga valley, where I intended to establish my camp for the night. Descending into the valley meant stepping out of the range of mobile communications. From this point onward, I was on my own with no means of contacting the outside world. If anything were to happen, extricating myself from danger would be solely my own responsibility. Cold. Ah. In the valley, I encountered my next river crossing. One of my primary concerns during this journey was the prospect of being stranded on the wrong side of a river, swollen by rain, unable to safely cross for several days. Such a predicament is not uncommon in Sarek. For this reason, I had allocated nearly 10 days for the completion of the trip, providing ample contingency for unforeseen events such as inclement weather, injury, or illness. 
This also allowed me to maintain a relatively relaxed pace since I carried my camping gear, a 10 day supply of food and my filming equipment, which included two cameras, tripod, microphone, several battery packs and a solar charger to keep everything running. Okay, it's day number three now and I'm down in the valley. It's very pleasant, it's a bit boggy down here, but it's quite nice. There's a beautiful river here. Let me show you how amazing is that. And the color's amazing. I don't know if you can see it, but it's an amazing kind of deep turquoise color. It's just beautiful. And we're just surrounded by mountains and up there, there's loads of glaciers. The rain that was forecast hasn't materialized, which is always good in my book, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna come this afternoon. In which case I probably want to be camped by then. But I'm making good progress today, much more progress than I expected to make, which is obviously a good thing. Pushing further up the valley exposed me to the dense undergrowth for which this part of Sarek is notorious. Thick forests of dwarf willow and dwarf birch impeded my progress. After a while, I discovered a clearing in the undergrowth where I could establish a camp just before the rain began to close in. Okay, well, that's the end of day three. It's been a pretty good day. I've got 12 kilometers done, which is pretty good going. A lot of uh, the last few kilometers coming up the, the valley there were just bushwhacking, going through dense forest, dense willow shrubs and, and through bogs. At one point I sank up to my, up to my thighs in, in a bog, which is not, not very pleasant. I think the decision to leave early this morning was the right one because it allowed me to beat the rain get my tent up before it really properly starts to rain this afternoon. My only concern now is what the weather's gonna be like tomorrow morning, and whether I'm gonna make, uh, make the distance that I wanna make tomorrow, but we'll see. Mosquito, kill it, kill it, kill it. So it's the morning of day four. I slept really quite well last night. It's half seven in the morning. I slept, slept in compared to yesterday morning for sure. It's still raining. It started raining in the night and it's still raining. The forecast that I saw, the last one I saw yesterday morning suggests that the rain is just gonna be like this all day. It's just gonna be slow, incessant light rain. So okay for walking in, uh, I think the forecast like I saw suggests that the weather's going to get better as the trip goes on, so rain today, showers tomorrow and then showers the next day, and then the, the next three or four days after that it's going to be sunshine. So that added to the fact that the going actually gets a bit easier, and the fact that my rucksack is going to be lighter. You know, I'm going to be getting my way through my consumables, lighting my rucksack, so as the trip goes on I should be able to cover bigger distances more easily. So, so I feel fairly confident that that plan plan's going to work. The only question mark is the weather of course, but if it doesn't turn out like I suspect, then we'll just have to adapt, right? The day began with yet another river crossing, my concern heightened by the possibility of rain swelling the river to an extent that could make the passage challenging or even perilous. The first braid of the river proved manageable, offering a safe crossing. However, the second presented a more daunting prospect with glacial sediment disguising the true depth of the water. Oh no, very deep. Oh no, it's really deep. Oh f Oh no.
don't like this. I don't like this at all. Oh, sh**. Oh, sh**. Despite wading through frigid waters up to my waist, I navigated the crossing successfully. After safely crossing the river, the next leg of my journey involved traversing the Luotolaco Plateau, a high alpine expanse composed of rock and water nearly devoid of any life. But before that, my next trial would be an exhausting uphill struggle to break out of the dense birch forest. The mist enveloping the plateau demanded meticulous navigation and cast an atmospheric shroud over this barren and desolate place. After many hours of trudging across the plateau, I started my descent. I saw a lake below in the distance and I made the decision to head there for the night. I found a spot nestled among the rocks, just large enough to fit my tent. As the weather began to clear, it revealed breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains. On expeditions like this, spanning several days in the wilderness, there's an inevitable period of adjustment. It takes time to attune to the landscape's rhythms and shed the trappings of everyday life. Here, encircled by towering mountains and camped beside this tranquil lake, that moment of transcendence arrived. In nature's embrace, I became fully immersed in the rhythm of my journey. Today's menu is creamy salmon with pasta. And it started raining again. Okay, so this is the end of day four. It's been a tough day really. Starting off with the river crossing, so that was quite an experience. That was at probably the upper limit of my comfort level. That was pretty hard, emotionally, physically draining. And then up onto the plateau, which was just a surreal experience. It's such a weird place. And I'm camped here by this lake and the weather's lifted and I'm surrounded by glaciated peaks, which are just unbelievable. I mean, the views are just, just fantastic. I'm very lucky to be here, really. So the plan for tomorrow then, there's, there's two options, really. First of all, I need to descend into the valley, which is just at the foot of that mountain over there. Um, so camping at this lake puts me at quite a nice position to do that descent. So that will have to come first, but then I've got another mountain pass to clear. So I'll get to the foot of it and see how I feel. If I'm feeling strong still, I'll, uh, I'll maybe do that mountain pass tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll, I'll leave it for the day after.
Having crested the plateau the day before, my path continued north. Breaking camp, I embarked on a descent into the Sarvesvaga Valley, readying myself for the demanding trek through the high mountain pass of Nye Daryepvaga. Navigating the boulder field with care, I took each step towards the pass's summit with deliberate precision. In this isolated and unforgiving terrain, the possibility of a twisted or broken ankle was simply unthinkable. Ascending further, I came across a silent testament to the harshness of this environment. Eventually, I arrived at the permanent snowfield that graced this side of the pass marking the gateway into the pass's otherworldly landscape. Originally, I intended to traverse the entire length of the pass down into the Algavaga Valley. However, my plans changed when I discovered a flat grassy patch beside a deep gorge, graced with views of distant waterfalls. This location was irresistible, leading me to establish my camp here for the night. raining again. Mm. Fortunately we've camped, which is good. Okay, so it's drawing towards the evening of day five. So this is the halfway point in terms of in terms of time and coincidentally about the halfway point in terms of distance as well. So I covered uh, another 12 kilometers today, which is quite respectable. But most importantly, I crossed the second of my two high mountain traverses. So that's now put me just above the Algavaga Valley. And from now on, the train actually gets a lot easier, a lot better. So it's just valley walking from now on. There'll still be river crossings every now and again, which will be sometimes tricky. But other than that, the, the train is a lot better than it has been. So I should speed along for the last half. So I'm feeling pretty good. It's nice to relax and rest my sore legs. It has started raining again. It rained a bit yesterday. It's rained today. Tomorrow is meant to be drier, but we'll see whether the forecast that I got uh, three, three, four days ago is still valid and, and still gonna be right or not. So I'm hoping that it will be and that it's going to be dry tomorrow and the day after but we'll have to see on the menu this evening we have chicken tikka masala so I'm about to enjoy this now
The next segment of my trek followed a northeasterly course, leading me through the Algavaga Valley and subsequently into the Guaparvaga Valley, with the huts at Scaria as my target. Scaria stands on a key confluence within Sarek's network of valleys. From this junction, I anticipated following well-trodden paths with the aim of speeding along the final portion of my journey. The anticipated ease of traversing the Algavaga Valley proved elusive as I encountered dense thickets of dwarf willow that barred my path. Navigating through several kilometers of this challenging undergrowth, I finally emerged from the willow jungle, finding relief as the terrain became more navigable. So this is the end of day six. This is the sixth camp of the trip. I'm camped on a nice spot, actually, on a little promontory above, above the river. Um, that river is really beautiful. It's so wide. It must look um, quite a sight when it's swollen with glacial meltwater and, and snow meltwater. So I've done about 12 kilometers today, and it was, it was harder than I expected it to be. They're one of the kind of landscape hallmarks of Sarek. We get a lot of these valleys with these dwarf willow jungles in them, which are really difficult to move through. Um, so that slowed my progress quite substantially in the first half of the day. Second half of the day was much better. There was nice firm ground as I came up to the, the top of the saddle at the head of the valley there. So good, good progress today. So I've got about 48 kilometers left to go and four days to do it. So an average about 12 kilometers a day. So really quite comfortable. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about the trip at the moment. On the seventh day of my journey, the morning broke bright with slender wisps of cloud adorning the mountain peaks. Unaware at the time I had arrived at a crucial juncture, the rest of my journey would predominantly feature smooth trails and fine weather, ensuring a more comfortable trek ahead.
this is the end of day seven been a really good day today it's not rained we've had the first proper sunshine since day two which have been most most welcome the going's been relatively good as well there was a river crossing earlier in the day right right after i left my camp and the going's been pretty good it's been good um valley walking with decent paths and stuff which is great there was one section that was a bit rough a few willow bushes and uh, rocks and stuff but that wasn't too bad so most of it has been on you know decent valley floor paths so i made reasonably good time i walked about 15 kilometers today which has been great so i've only got 34 kilometers left to go and three days to do it and on the menu tonight we have we've got pasta bolognese lovely The day before, my path had meandered northwards from the huts of Scaria, traversing the expansive Rotters Varga Valley, where I had set up camp the previous night. Continuing from there, my route took a northwestern turn, winding along the valley and passing by an old hut, a relic of the Sami people's distant past. On my eighth day, I set up a camp on a bluff with a scenic view of the river below. The continued stretch of good weather was a perfect opportunity to thoroughly dry all of my damp equipment. Embracing the moment, I braved a wash in the icy glacial meltwater of the river, marking my first such experience on this journey. the end of day eight today's been a pretty good day um, it's been nice and sunny weather blue skies all day same as yesterday so it makes a really big change from the rain that I've been experiencing the, the few days before that so that's most welcome uh, and the walking's been pretty good as well so I've made 15 kilometers and now I only have 20 kilometers left and, and two days to do it in which is really comfortable I'm camped in a delightful spot just surrounded by mountains. I mean, look, here's my tent. And the mountains up there. Mountains up there. And mountains over there. It's just phenomenal. I am really, really blessed to be here. It's amazing. And for dinner this evening, we have chili con carne, which would be lovely.
The last portion of my journey was a trek through the forest, leading me to the Padjelanta Laden long distance trail. Once on this path, my steps would bring me to the Akka Mountain Station, and then, after a few kilometers, to the pier at Akka Lake, the final destination of my adventure. After many days of trekking at a relatively high altitude, well above the tree line, I finally descended to a level where the forest began to embrace the landscape once again. Soon I reached the junction with the Padjelantaladen, where my journey would become considerably easier. This path, equipped with duck boarding and bridges, eliminated the need for fording, even across the smallest of creeks. the end of day nine the weather's been amazing again today it has been for the last three days or so uh, which has been fantastic it's allowed me to make some really good progress nice easy walking down the valleys and uh, I've done about 18 kilometers just under 18 kilometers today which is not a bad fall and I'm now um, just about an hour or two's walk from the pier at Acker where tomorrow morning I'll get the, the ferry across Acker Lake to Ritzum um, after a diet of 10 days of breakfast bars, oat cakes and freeze dried meals. I'm looking forward to um, a little bit of variety and some fresh food would be nice as well. But other than that, it's been a, it's been a really good day. Nice walking along the, the trail down from the mountains and then along the Padjelanta Laden. I'm camped in a really beautiful little spot. The mountain you can see behind me is Acker. Last night I was camped on the other side of it, so I've come all the way around the mountain, which is quite satisfying. Um, but the sun's still shining. I've got mixed emotions, really. It's it's the end of the walk, more or less. As soon as I've done those hour or two of walking tomorrow morning, I'll be at the pier, and that will be my walk finished. I can't wait to to have it finished in some ways and to get home to my family. But at the same time, it's kind of sad that it is over, as hard as it's been in some some cases. In case you're wondering, tonight's dinner menu is chicken tikka masala. Um, as I said, I'm quite looking forward to not having to eat freeze-dried meals, um, but that will come.
just like that it's all over. So I've arrived at the pier, which uh, where I'll get the boat in about in about 45 minutes across the lake to Ritsem. And like most trips of this kind, the end feels like a bit of an anticlimax in many ways. You know, you just arrive at the end and that's it, you're done. Uh, there's no fanfare, there's no bells, there's no whistle, there's no finishing line. So it is a bit of a strange feeling in a way. But over the coming weeks and months is where you get a chance to really digest the experience. Now I'm just looking forward to eventually sleeping in a proper bed and eating some proper food, nothing that's freeze dried or pre-packaged, some fresh fruit, fresh salad and vegetables, that, that would be lovely. Really looking forward to that. But for now I can just relax and enjoy the view.